Um, okay. Okay. So this uh, this uh, video is on. Is that is it okay? Yeah. This video is on curiosity and goal setting and temptation. Um, the ego. I mean the ego. I mean the the. I mean curiosity. And I mean, Hawkins does talk about curiosity. I mean, that's one of the, the big tools within the ego, is to be curious about something, which by its very nature is dualistic. You know, so one, one thing to know, I mean, uh, with studying Hawkins, who was a teacher of enlightenment, is this, like, uh, so if you take it to the observer, is to know that curiosity has to come from the ego. Like, is the infinite field of love and power curious? Of course not, because it's not dualistic. In that field, uh, another way to look at it is levels of... Con so I'm going to use the word curiosity and temptation because the only thing that can be curious and have temptation is the ego. Like the infinite field of God consciousness, the, uh, the field of oneness cannot suffer from temptation or curiosity or need to make a goal. So one of the lessons in A Course in Miracles is I place the future into the hands of God. So that's one of the things. I mean, if you did yes. that one lesson, uh, means that uh, you'd have to be here now, you know. And also, you have to understand that I come from a, a field of addiction. Addiction also energetically is the feeling of not being at peace right now, mm -hmm. and of craving. So you can have the feeling or the energy of craving and temptation. So, like I am a food addict. So. It's like if there's a donut on the table, there can suddenly be, it can be energetic. You know, there's a craving or a temptation to have the donut. Or I can, it can be mental. It's like I'm bored. I'm bored of just being in the present moment. Mm -hmm. You know, like I want to have... But as soon as you go into the future, you know, you, you go into dualism. You go out of the present moment. So, there's, so it's like I've been meditating for three hours. Mm -hmm. And my ego, and this thought arises that this is boring. Like, uh, maybe if I have like a hundred thousand pounds by the end of the next year, I'll be more happy. <laughs> or if I go on a diet and lose some more weight, then I'll be even more happy. But you know, the, what's the paradox with temptation, uh, which can be physical, like a feeling, temp you know, a feeling of lack? and wanting a donut, or a mental, conceptual uh, boredom or temptation to pick up something from the collective, which is like, you know, like some of the thoughts I got, if I'm more successful, if I have more money, if I can like, or uh, then, then I'll be happy in the future, you know. Or if I'm thinner, if I can go and find the right diet book, let's buy another diet book. And and then and then I'll be thinner in, in, in I'll be one stone thinner in, 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 in a year, and that's my goal to be thinner or to be more successful, or it could be to be famous or you know whatever it is. So those are what I call curiosities or temptations, which take you out, you know, and they 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 arise because they're all future. You know, another thing to know with temptation and curiosity, is is from your own experience of being in the present moment, or being in the observer, or being in those infinite states of consciousness, does temptation or curiosity exist? And can it exist? You know, so this is, and these, I, I say all of this stuff because it's to, to delete the belief system that temptation and curiosity is good. Because it's one of the core, and boredom as well, boredom, curiosity, and, and Self-achievement, i.e. ego achievement, you know, I need to be thinner, I need to be more successful, I need to have more money, I need to be more famous. Mm -hmm. But, you know, those take me into the future, and who is that, who is that for? Is that for the infinite self, or is that for the limited self? So, these things can only arise out of being in limited self, you know. So, you've got to understand, you've got to sort of resolve, you know, the first thing with temptation and curiosity for me, like, if I get a thing, like a thought comes in, like, that's taking me into the future. Um, there's nothing wrong with goal setting. I mean, I, th I like what Hawkins says, like to be in a position, you know, it's like Hawkins has this thing of the, of the level of consciousness of neutrality. You know, the level of consciousness of neutrality is like, suddenly a thought pops in mind, um, it'd be nice to, to earn some money today. 
or tomorrow. It'd be good to earn some money tomorrow and have a bit of extra money in the bank account. But then it's like it's more from a place of neutrality. You know, if it's from neutrality, it's like, well, if you don't earn money tomorrow and say, and say you just go and sit in the park for the whole day, that's also equally good. You know, so that's like, so it's like there's no power really to take you out of the present moment. You all start to understand in those infinite, from your own experience in these infinite states of God consciousness, you just ask yourself, did curiosity, when you're in the timeless now, and like you're in the timeless now, and you're just like everything is equal, absolutely beautiful in this moment and perfect. Nothing needs to be changed. There's not even a thought to go into the future. When you're in those infinite states of presence, you know that curiosity and temptation cannot exist because they're, they're complete. You know, that, that, that feeling of completeness and wholeness. The other thing with, with low levels of consciousness, anyone who's been in a low state, fear, anger, and lots of thinking, which takes you out. You know what, when you're so content and so happy in the now, you know, the thoughts stop and everything becomes absolutely perfect and, and what is now is absolutely imperfection. It's like absolute completeness, you know. Now, it's like if I'm in a state of absolute God consciousness and someone says, like, uh, there's donuts but you have to walk across London to a donut shop to get them, like, that would have no effect. That thought would dissolve in a split second and wouldn't even track. It would have no traction because the infinite field of God consciousness of presence, the eternal now, is just so strong and powerful in the now that you're at max. You're at maximum happiness, if that makes sense. Mm. Temptation can only arise when you're feeling separated. Curiosity can only arise, or goal setting can only arise from states of lack, and it's not enough now. So if I'm starting to feel fearful or hungry or whatever it is, then uh, it could be at an energetic level, I feel hungry for a donut, or it could be at a mental level. You know, and these are just programs like, you know, parents saying like you have to be more successful, you have to get better grades next time. You have to like, these are all the programs that come in that is like more, or improving the limited self, being thinner, being more successful, uh, being whatever it's, but does the infinite self need to go on a self-improvement program? You know, like, I need to take 12, 12 models in the future to, and then in 12 models in the future, if I go to course one or next month and two months, then I can be in the now after 12 months' time. You know, so who's curious or tempted to do the self-improvement, to have a goal? I mean, goal setting. I mean, does that, you know, that's like, you know, like, the, these books on like have a, a long-term goal and have your sub goals and then plot out like I'm going to do the next five minutes this is my task and then I've got 300 tasks for today and 700 tasks map for the next year I mean who who would do that is that the limited self that's in lack and trying to get out of pain or fulfilling fulfilling a concept from the world like you have to be thinner smarter you I mean what self needs to improve itself and go on a goal setting you know and, so the more you go into these infinite states, I mean, goal setting and temptation, another way I like to do it with goal setting and temptation is to do the observer on it. That's one of my favorite ways, because as soon as I've got a thought that, uh, now I can have a, a thought for goal setting and I can have a thought for temptation. So let's say uh, hunger arises and there's a thought like I need to get to the donut shop. You know, so that energy of lack, the energy of lack, and then the thought of lack, or the thought of a goal or a temptation. So then it's like, well, what's observing the energy of lack? What observes the hunger? And what observes the thought of the donut shop? So the observer of the donut shop and the observer of the energy of lack is not in lack. And then you get back to the present moment, if you can go into the pure observer. The other thing with... Um, Goal setting, like if I think of goal setting, you know, goal setting is like, it really takes you into the future. It, you're really, uh, if, if, I mean, not necessarily, I think I should put this thing, when you do things from a place of neutrality, um, if I had to do something like a goal, like, you know, if someone said like, you've got to do the 300 tasks in the next year and do five tasks every week, I would try and dissolve it so I'm doing it from a place of neutrality. 
or from the observer. So when you're doing things from, like if you have to do practical things and get through a lot of workshops and a lot of things and hit a lot of goals, this can be useful at work. You know, your boss comes to, to you and says, you know, you need to like, uh, you've got your, your sales target is 300 sales by the end of the month. So I expect you to get like 20 sales a, a, a day. And we're going to rank you on the board of how you're doing compared to all the other salespeople, which is an unusual thing you'd get in sales things. So it's like all goal setting and targets and, and improvement and, and pressure. is like I'd want to be in either in a position of neutrality around that. So feel the feelings out and cancel my belief. I would take out all the meaning, meaningfulness of the goals. <coughs> so in a way I'm being practical. How do you do goals? and not do goals at the same time. Well, then you have to take out the meaning and the, and the, and the neediness of it. So that, helps you, that means you do the goals from a place of neutrality, but there's not much meaning, and there's not much of an energetic pull. But again, it depends on, with goal setting, so I'm not against goal setting. I mean, I'd rather not do goal setting, because I just want to be in the eternal now. But if I had to do goal setting, the, also, the thing with temptation, I mean, goal setting, I would think, like, does that come from, you know, there's nothing wrong. Each level of consciousness is okay, you know, if you want to do goal setting and whatever. But I think at a certain level of consciousness, you know, goal setting for me is coming from a, a place of fear. You know, ultimately, it's a level of consciousness. I'm not saying it's wrong. And if I had to do it, I would do it. But from a place of neutrality, I would take out the meaning of the goals and I'd feel out the feeling of needing to do the goals, and then I'd try and do it from a place of the observer or from neutrality. So <clears throat> whether I make a million pounds in the next year or not is not important. I might do it, but whether it happens or not is quite immaterial. I wouldn't want to be desperate, like I'll be a big failure if I don't make a million pounds in the next year, because that for me has the vibration of lack and it has thoughts which are very meaningful, <clears throat> which for me block off the, the, the experience. Temptation, you know, so that's on goals. Personally, <clears throat> I think from a high level, like if you look at like Hawkins and some of the other people, you see, and the states of absolute faith and trust being in the eternal now, like the universe provides everything you need all the time whenever you need it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the mystical. I know that's very advanced, and maybe most people don't want to go to the mystical level, but you, you find the stories of, of mystical teachers is they're in the now, and it's like the universe, when a meal is required, it comes out of nowhere, you know. And when money, is when money is needed, it comes out of nowhere. So there's no this needing of the ego needing to work for it or be in the future. So that, for me, is the essence of the lesson of Course in Miracles, I place the future. Because as soon as you're trying to do goal setting and control the future from the level of the ego, and the levels of the ego consciousness are how much fear or lack or neediness or how much pride or shame and how much thinking is involved. Those are different levels of ego consciousness. So, you know, so the thing that needs to do goals, <clears throat> what level of fear is needing to do that? And, you know, for me, the enlightened teachers are the absolute of faith. So the enlightened teachers have placed the future into the hands of God. So it's like, well, if food, either food arrives for dinner or it doesn't. You know, either money pays the rent or it doesn't. But mystically, like those enlightened teachers, I mean, people give them a home or people give them food. It's like the universe at every moment is always providing without the need for the ego to go on a goal setting workshop or to be in, uh, or to be in. T so it's only the ego that can, but you know, it is something that Hawkins talks about. I mean, curiosity, I mean, Hawkins talks about curiosity and the Garden of Eden, you know. The ego bites the, um, the apple of curiosity to go into duality. So that's the, the parable for, for enlightenment. If you stay in the now, i.e. if you place the future into the hands of God, you just stay now, and you trust the miraculous, or you go into your ego and say, I'm in fear, I need, and I'll be safe if I go on a goal-setting workshop, or I'll be safe if, you know, like as a food addict, I, 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 my head would be like, if I stash enough donuts in my house and keep a few donuts in my pockets, then I'll be safe. I just have to have an endless supply of food to be safe. But that's, com that's not coming from placing the future, that's coming from fear. 
you know so it's the different levels but also I don't I want to take it all back because wherever you are it's just going to the next level and sometimes at a certain point you, you do go on a goal setting level but when you get into the level of the Course in Miracles or the power of now in the Course in Miracles is talking about absolute faith you know like place the future you know place your goals into that what, what would happen to your head if you placed all your goals into the hands of God right now like every single goal like I have my ego says you've got 300 goals you need to achieve before you're happy if I put all 300 goals into into God's hands so you take care of it like how many goals do I need to get now before I'm happy it's like well God is in God's hands I don't need to control it but I've always found that when I surrender something it's like it's like I'm I'm sort of uh, outsourcing the problem to God <laughs> and uh, it's like either I go like God I don't trust you I'm going to go on a goal working uh, workshop for 12 months and really get really intelligent on how to control the world and achieve because you know my ego can do better than God or I just surrender it hand it over to God and go it's your business whether it happens or not mm -hmm. I found that when I surrender God does a better job than my ego that's my personal experience mm -hmm. And also, I think temptation is also a really, really good one. We talk about the seven deadly sins, you know, the, t uh, the temptation. So temptation uh, for me, uh, or the, cu the ego's curiosity, well, it's coming from ego, you know, to the temptation, the seven deadly sins. I mean, for me, the seven deadly sins are coming from a place of separation. It's like, if I'm hungry right now, then I will steal your donuts. You know, I will have... Uh, greed. Greed is one of the... Uh, no, that, that's gluttony, isn't it? Gluttony is for mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm. So, uh, gluttony for food. So, why would I steal someone's donuts when they're not looking? So, that, that is a, a deadly sin. Like, to steal your donuts when you're not looking is a, is a deadly sin. So, that's coming from... The temptation to do that is because I'm not in the now. I'm not, with, I'm not in God consciousness now. And so, now from a place of separation and fear, it's like, well, if she looks away, I can steal her donuts and then pretend I didn't take them, which is coming from a place of lack and there's not enough donuts for me or I need to hoard the donuts. And so ultimately though, so I have to have faith. So the spiritually right thing to do is not to steal your donuts when you're not looking which is the temptation when I'm in fear and separation, but is to, is to uh, surrender that temptation to God and then work my way in trust and then get to that place of the, the whole being needy of donuts getting filled by God, which is also faith, you know, and if there is a temptation, it's to work. But for me, it's like, um, it's like having what, you know, like whenever there's a goal setting, it's like there's a layer of beliefs with, between each goal. Like, there's a whole lot of goals from the collective universal consciousness of being thin. You know, there's hundreds of diet books, there's hundreds of uh, images all over the place, like, be get beach body ready by crib, by whatever it is. And I'm just, you just watch this stuff, the whole, the e you know, this is the thing, like, you're always being programmed with collective belief systems. Like, oh, you know, you've, you've handed over my body and how fat or thin it is into God's hand, and then you see a poster, like, be thinner. So you get the subliminal message to pick up the thing, or, you know, be, you need more money, or, like, everyone will, will like you more if you're more successful, mm. you know. Or they'll have things shaming you, like, uh, don't be a down and out, be successful, take this course on goal setting to be rich. You know, or your friends will go like, I just did this, I just did this goal setting workshop and I've achieved 50,000 pounds in the last year. What have you done? So, mm -hmm. so these things come, these are like temptations. Like I've lost, you know, someone comes in here and says, I've lost weight. Someone says here, I did a goal setting workshop and I'm now richer than I was last year. So those for me are like temptations and it seems so seductive. Like, can I buy your diet book? What's, what's the diet book you got? And what was that goal setting workshop you went on? Can you tell me? Because but who would be tempted or who would be curious to do that? Mm. So for me, it's like getting 100%, you know, like, I don't want curiosity in my life. So for me, everything is about getting to neutrality. 
around everything, like if it's donuts. So, and we'll go into this, and maybe I'll do that on there, but to feel the craving out until I get God consciousness, and that means I'll, I'll bypass the temptation for donuts energetically. That's the feel the feeling process, uh, the letting go process, or mentally. There's mental temptation and goal setting, which are belief systems, which is not so much energetic, but then it's like, to, you know, like, you know, praying to, praying to the Holy Spirit for a miracle and shifting my perception on, like, do I need to do a goal setting workshop? Do I need to get a big calendar? You know, you can get, you can get those big calendars that fill the whole wall, wall and you can put like, you know, and with time for each day so you can see, I, I think uh, Simon Cowell had one of those. Yeah, I thought that was great, you know, like you can have a whole wall filled up with your calendar and all the goals you've got on it and each time, each appointment. And look at that every day. I mean, or so, so yeah, I think that's a great question.